Hey, what's up guys, welcome back. Today we're gonna to be talking about prep and finish sanding. What grits to use, what tools you might wanna consider. Yeah, that stuff. Now for starters, let me clarify. When I say prep and finish sanding, I mean prepping a surface for paint or finish sanding your wood so that you can put your paint on it. So we're not sanding a finish. I've got videos on finish sanding finishes and stuff like that. Um, but for today's purposes, we're talking about getting your wood ready for your sealer or for your paint. There are a couple different things that you need to know here and the grit that you use is gonna depend a little bit on what your next step is. So let's start out with the grit discussion real quick and then we'll move into a little demo with some of the tools. Uh, if you are sanding your guitar for stain, a lot of people say that you need to sand it with like 220 grit, nothing really finer than that uh, so that the stain can soak in. I haven't found that that's the case. I usually dye instead of stain though, and my dyes of course are a lot finer, a lot thinner, and more transparent than your average stain. So for stains, I've found that anything up to 400 grit is fine. Uh, you start to get a little less absorption when you move into the 600-800 grit range. With dyes, I haven't had any of those issues. 600 grit, just fine, 800 grit dye still soaks in and gets right in between the wood fibers. So that hasn't been an issue for me, but check your stain, check your cans. It does tend to say 220 grit. Some people think that that's the right way to go. It's not how I do it, but keep that in mind. Um, if you're putting a sealer on, I like to go with about a 320 grit, maybe a 400 grit for that. Now a sealer is going to seal up some of the sanding marks and it's gonna give you a nice smooth surface that you can then sand even smoother before you move on to your paint. The same applies for a primer. Whether you use a primer or a sealer is up to you and it depends on what paint system you're using. I do have a video on primer versus sealer. Check that out if you're not sure which one you wanna use. Now you won't always use primer or sealer. Sometimes you're gonna to wanna to move straight to a thin finish, uh, particularly if you're doing an oil or something like that, you're gonna go straight to the finish work the oil. If you are using a dye and then moving straight to a clear over top of that and not using a sealer or a primer, that's going to make a difference in what you do. Uh, for those, I recommend going a little finer. So if I'm going to be doing an oil finish, I don't want to be putting it right over a 400. It'll work. It's not a big deal, but it'll soak in a little bit more and I just want a smoother surface. For those, I'm going to be using something like a 600 or 800 grit generally. Uh, and yeah, that goes for both the oils and like I said, the dyes, they don't have a problem soaking in. And a lot of times when I do a dye job, I just want to go straight over it with clear. I don't want to mess around with sealers or anything like that. Not that you can't. I can certainly do a dye job with a vinyl sealer over it from Mohawk or a sanding sealer from Oxford and then, and then put on top of that my clear coat but I don't necessarily want to. I want to sometimes just go straight in with that clear, keep a nice thin finish, and that's when I'm gonna look for a 600 to 800 grit for my final prep sanding. Now let's talk about blocks and stuff, but before we move on to that directly, an honorable mention, if you will. If you're doing a dye job or moving straight into the clear type of thing like we talked about and not using a sealer, you may very well want to consider a scraper instead of sanding. Now, sanding tends to lay grain down. It smushes it a little bit as it sands it. And yeah, you can get a beautiful, smooth uh, surface with that. But a scraper, and I'm not talking about a plane, so when I describe this, don't mistake it for a plane. I mean specifically a scraper. A scraper kind of shears those fibers off and gives you a more upright wood grain fiber, uh, which can actually give you a nicer figure if you're doing a dye job or something like that. There are comparisons out there. I'm not gonna do one in this video. That's not the point of this one, but keep that in mind. And if you're doing a job like that, you know these things are awesome if you learn how to use them and sharpen them. It's an important tool. All right, so let's talk about some of the tools now. Um, you can use power sanders, of course, to do your final sanding. We'll talk about hand sanding more because it's better, but anyway. Um, Orbital sanders work fine, but really what you want to do is try to sand with the grain. So they're not the best option. Those vibrating sanders work well as well. You can get a nice smooth finish with them. Again, though, following the grain is kind of the best option. It's, it's what you really are looking for as an ultimate result here. So you can do the bulk of the work with that if you want and then finish off with hand or block sanding. Um, or you, if, you're, if you're happy with the result that gives you, then fine. Uh, but I do recommend finishing off with hand sanding if at all possible. 
Now, not every type of sander works here. Those little oscillating sanders, the ones from the multi-tools, those tend to leave grooves. The surface is too small. I do not recommend using those on a flat surface when you're doing your finish sanding. Not a great idea. Also, belt sanders are just too aggressive. They're too aggressive for your final prep sand on wood, and they're definitely too aggressive in case anybody was wondering uh, for actual sanding of a finish. I had, I do have a video on the best types of sanders for sanding finishes, and I have had at least one person come on there and say, it doesn't matter, it's all about the grit, it doesn't matter what kind you use. That's, that's not correct, okay? A, and like this particular individual was saying, you can use a belt sander with 800 grit, as long as it's 800 grit, that's all it's gonna, it, it doesn't matter. Um, not true. The, the motion that it has is, it, it makes a difference and the speed that it operates at. So a belt sander, for example, even if you use 1500 grit belts on it somehow, is going to create too much heat because of the way it works and it's going to mess up a finish. Similarly, on a, a project like this, it can create some problems just because it's an aggressive item. So anyway, that's my rant about that. Um, make sure you're using those same grits if you work with those other types of sanders. But for a finished sanding, Again, I recommend kind of going in by hand and following the grain. So you can do this by hand, not the best option. I know I just said it was, but with your hands, I mean. Try to avoid using your fingers. They can leave grooves. Try to use your, your hand itself, your palm, for a flatter surface, right? And, and do it that way. And don't push too hard, particularly when you're doing it by hand because your hand isn't flat. So what we're trying to end up with here, ideally, is the flattest surface possible. Obviously, a sanding block is gonna be kind of your, your standard, your go-to for something like this. So larger sanding blocks, although they don't work in as many situations because sometimes you gotta sand smaller pieces, they are better. They will give you a flatter surface over a larger area. You can get a perfectly flat surface with a smaller sanding block. But if you've got a nice big one, well, that's gonna be your best option. This is a 3M sanding block. I've got these in the Amazon link in the description. I also have this guy, the Dura block. I use this for a variety of things. I will be showing you guys some of those in later videos. But for now, I mean, I can do the whole guitar like this and keep the paper on it at all times. So I've got a 320 grit stick pad on here. It comes in a roll and I just go, you no, know, gently across. You can use both hands if I've got this sitting on something that's grippier. And I just get this whole thing nice and flat. And if there's an area where I see that I'm not sanding or that it's not smooth, then I know that that's not flat with the rest of the guitar. These are designed for automotive work. They're what we use for blocking cars, especially these gigantic ones, but they come in a variety of sizes. This one's overkill, I realize that. Um, but I need it that big for some other stuff that I do. Anyway, so this is kind of my, my go-to finish sanding option here. Follow the gra grain with this, and I go to 300 or four, or 320 or 400 grit to get this thing ready for the next stage, which in this case, in the case of this guitar, is a sealer because this is getting a custom airbrush job on it. So those the flat surface is kind of the easy part. We also need to worry about these curved areas, though. Now you can get flexible sanding blocks, all right? I don't have any here, but you can get them and they're a great option for this. Several companies make them. Foam blocks also work for this sort of thing. I don't love them, but that's more a personal preference than anything else. They can get the job done. An eraser, I know, sounds goofy, right? But an eraser is a good option. You can use an eraser to do flat sanding on top of a guitar or a surface. Um, but if you're sanding a curved area, and I realize my video title probably isn't restricted to guitars, that's just what I'm using as a demonstration piece here because that's what most of my channel is. If you're using an eraser on the, the edge here, you can bend this around the surface quite nicely. You just need a little, a little piece of paper, keep it clean as you go. And you can do a really nice job of following that curve. The eraser takes the guesswork out of it. You don't have to do it with your hand and it follows that curve nicely, okay? Now that's for these bigger curves. You obviously can't do that on this little guy, but you can do it for both the outside curves and especially if you've got a thinner eraser, but this'll do it anyway, these inside curves, these bigger inside curves, okay? So this, when I finish sand this guitar, which is what I'm in the process of doing here, 
I'm going to use this eraser for every curve that I can bend it to. All right. So that's how I do my curve work. And again, same grits. And then finally, we have this tight curve here. Now, I don't want to be trying to get this eraser in there. It's simply not going to work. I could do it sideways, but we don't have much flexibility in that direction. It's just not the right option. So for that, I move on to these, okay? And I have a set of, these are rubber. I've got the sandpaper on this one right now. But anyway, I've got a set of these. So I pick the right size and I end up doing essentially the same thing. Sorry for a little bit of disorganization here, but I take around the rubber, not around the sandpaper, even though that helps it grip. I take an appropriate grit of paper, wrap it around, and do my sanding that way. And you can do both directions, but I recommend trying to follow the curve as much as you can. Even though the grain runs up and down here, it's, it's end grain. So follow the curve as much as you can, because on end grain, it doesn't really make as much difference. And that's how you get those nice and smooth. The only place where hand sanding with your hands is the best option, as far as I'm concerned, is just over these little curves here. And I just bend, my, bend a couple fingers over and give it, a, give it a few swipes. These curves generally don't need as much sanding as everything else. So I just, yeah, use the crook of my finger. Some people will be tempted to do this you can flatten that out doing that. So be very, very careful if you're gonna do that. If you've got a long piece of paper like that, that's good for shaping necks and stuff, but it's not great for these little tight corners. All right, guys, that's it for this one. That's my diatribe on finished prep sanding. Uh, I predict no fewer than probably eight or 10 comments over the course of the next little while saying, you talk too much, less talking, more doing, but I felt that it was important to explain some of the reasoning behind some of that. So. Sorry there wasn't a whole lot of action in this one, but I hope you enjoyed it nonetheless. If you did, please feel free to give it a thumbs up. I would appreciate it. It helps me out. And remember to subscribe. You're going to see the cool paint job I have going on this one and a bunch of other projects. So as always, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. Have a good one, and I will see you next time.